Hey everyone, how's it going? Riley here. We're back in the office here today to talk about Camelina in 2023. I made a video about Camelina production and renewable diesel back a couple years ago in 2021, and several of you have asked for a follow-up video and a little bit more on the actual growing season of Camelina itself and a little bit on the steps you take to farm it. So Sustainable Oils has actually sponsored this video right here. Thank you, Sustainable Oils so that I'm able to take some time out of my schedule to share with you guys what we do to grow this crop and a bit of a recap on what Camelina really even is and why we're growing it out here in Montana, Colorado, Kansas, and a few other areas. So we'll go ahead and start off with a recap on Camelina Sustainable Oils as a company and the Renewable Diesel Project. So yes, Camelina is an oilseed crop that is being used as a feedstock for renewable diesel. Particularly, Camelina produces an ultra-low carbon renewable diesel fuel that is a drop-in equivalent to traditional petroleum-based fuels with fewer contaminants and emissions. So why Camelina over other oilseed crops such as canola and soy? Well, there's a couple different reasons, but the biggest one has to do with Camelina's carbon intensity score. And that's because it is, by quite a ways, has the lowest carbon intensity score of all these feedstock crop options. Within a crop rotation, Camelina can replace fallowed, or idle acres as well, which ultimately means an additional revenue source for the farmer. Camelina is also very drought tolerant, and we saw this back in 2021. Camelina was one of the best crops harvested in Montana because it really tolerated the drought well. It performed well, it still grew, and just flat out amazing to see that. Camelina is capable of yielding up to 2,000 pounds per acre, which is pretty impressive. However, that's with a fairly good Camelina crop. And 38 to 42% of that 2,000 pounds is pure oil content from the crop. However, the rest of the crop can be used as a feed source for livestock, so it doesn't all just go to waste. Sustainable Oils, of course, is the company that is taking care of all of these grower contracts, doing all the research and development on the Camelina crop, and all of that's happening right here in Montana. They are based in Great Falls, with a full-time staff in Great Falls, which means our boots on the ground experience with this company has been excellent. They're always there. They're working in the state, which a lot of the acres of Camelina is grown, and that's just great to see. Sustainable Oils is owned by a parent company called Global Clean Energy Holdings. They also own the refinery company in California and have the multi-year agreement with ExxonMobil, which means that there's a pretty solid market for this renewable diesel product that Camelina is ultimately being made into. Let's talk about the experience of growing Camelina as a farmer. What is it like to grow this crop when compared to other cereal crops that are commonly grown in the area? And what's working with sustainable oils been like? So we're going to start with the contract process here, which happens in the early spring before planting, of course. And the 2023 contract that was offered to producers was to be paid $350 per acre for 160 acres of production of Camelina, meaning that a farmer grows 160 acres of this crop. And upon a certified approved stand of the Camelina, the farmer is simply paid $350 an acre for the 160 acres grown once that Camelina is delivered out of the farmer's grain bin at the end of the season. And if you wanna grow additional acres of Camelina beyond that 160, that is doable as well, and you're paid on a per pound basis for that production, which is at a set rate at the beginning of your contract period. Sustainable Oils provides the seed for free. The farmer does not pay for the seed, and the farmer does pay for about everything else. So your inputs, the time, the machinery, all of that, which yes, you do use your existing fleet of machinery to plant and harvest this crop. That's on the farmer. However, Sustainable Oils takes care of the seed. Camelina is stored in the farmer's grain bin during harvest time, so we do have to bin it. We can't do harvest delivery on the crop. However, Sustainable Oils basically guarantees that it's going to be delivered within a year of harvest. 
So for planting, we actually had a neighbor come in with his small Pottinger disc drill and we seeded an ultra narrow row spacing on this crop in order to try to maximize production per acre and minimize any pressures for weeds by really packing the seed population in with camelina. This all worked really well, but in June, the camelina started showing some stress due to a nitrogen deficiency. We ended up applying 20 pounds of nitrogen at the time of seeding and ultimately needed to put more down. Had we done that, this crop would have really taken off. Nevertheless, I still think this was a cool idea and maybe one that needs to continue to be explored. And it was awesome to see that Pottinger drill up close and in action as well. Of course, before that drill came in, we went ahead and broadcast spread fertilizer on the ground. And then I actually jumped in the super coulter, which is a vertical tillage tool, and used that to kind of mix in that fertilizer a little bit. Then the Pottinger drill came in and seeded the Camelina. And during that process, Kyle Reedy from Sustainable Oils actually came out for a field visit and helped us dial in that drill and make sure that we were getting the correct depth on the seeding. And that's huge because setting depth on a new crop, especially with tiny seeds like Camelina, can be a little challenging at times. And so having an expert from Sustainable Oils actually come out to your field and help you get going is a huge bonus for sure. Just out here with Shane Slivka getting started seeding and checking seeding depths for him. Everything looks good. We're right around that half inch mark where we want to be. Our row spacing is really tight, six inch row spacing. It's shallow. The soil has been super cultured to begin with. So it's pretty dry on the top here where the seeds are laying in the furrow. They're just right there. So that hopefully the rain that they're calling for on Friday comes. If we get a good quarter inch of rain or whatnot to soak and settle everything, these will all start germinating and coming up. Kyle actually came out again to help us get going with harvest. And this is where the challenges that we're seeing right now can be with this crop. It is a more difficult one to set the combine for and harvest. So this is what a Camelina field looks like during harvest time. You can see everything is that uniform color. You don't have any greens in this at all. And some of these pods are already beginning to shatter, meaning that the pods have broken open and the seeds have literally fallen out of the plant. When that starts happening, you best get a combine in it if you can. We finally got around to being able to start cutting this Camelina. The combine is behind me right now. Harvest is a go for the Camelina crop. How in the world does this stuff cut? Well, it's a little bit of a different crop. Camelina is pretty similar to canola as in the fact that it's a brassica crop and how it grows and all of that. But the pods are round as opposed to nice and elongated and the pods are a lot thicker and heavier, which changes how it threshes a lot. The camelina seed is also smaller. And so it makes it to where we really struggle separating the pods from the camelina seed because if you turn your fan speed up to get the pods out, you're gonna blow those really small seeds out. And so kind of the trick of the trade, and it's not the best, but it's the best we've found so far uh, is to run a ton of tailings. So right now we have our upper sieve opened quite a bit and our lower sieve closed down a lot. And our fan speed is brought down quite a bit from normal too. And what that's gonna do, it's that's gonna let everything in to the upper sieve. So now you're between the two sieves where all of your crop's gonna be. And all of that's just gonna get keep recirculating through your tailings and keep recirculating it through and through and through. And it's not ideal, but that is the best way we found to get this as clean as we can without blowing it out the back. You cannot tell how good your sample is in this crop by just looking at it. Because all of these pods are gonna settle to the top. So no matter what, it's gonna be all pods on the top. So what I do is I just kind of gently paw it off until I see good camelina, and I kind of gauge it about how thick that pod layer is. If it's a really thick pod layer, I'm probably not doing good. This stuff, I don't have to paw it away too much until I see good camelina. So I'd say this stuff is plenty clean. 
As far as timing goes, it's not too bad, but you will have to get onto that crop in a week or so to minimize shattering. We were able to get in the field seven or eight days after it was ready and saw, let's say, a three to five percent loss due to shattering. And then the combines don't move all that fast through the Camelina either. However, that is an issue that Sustainable Oils is very well aware of and wants to help improve because that ultimately improves harvest efficiency of the crop, of course. So things like aftermarket sieves could be a thing in the future to help increase harvest efficiency of this crop. Overall, I would say the best part of the experience of trying out Camelina on the farm this year was simply just working with good people. Sustainable oils, they understand what farming is like out here. They are very good at just being the boots on the grounds and being very willing to help a producer get all the machinery dialed in, make sure the crop is doing all right, and provide input where needed whenever challenges arise. The same goes out to Mike and Barney, the head honchos of Sustainable Oils. They have spent a ton of time out here in Montana and learned a lot about how farming works out here and make the experience as good as it can be for producers out here in Montana so that producers want to continue to grow this crop and fulfill the demand that is currently there in the renewable diesel market. Anyway, that's about it. That's about all I have for a 2023 update on Camelina production in Montana. If you have additional questions, please leave those below in the comments section. I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. Thanks guys, we'll catch you in the next video.